All right, welcome aboard, gamers. We have a special treat today. Um, going for the Minesweeper Expert world record. And again, going to do a little bit of warm-up here. Not going to do as long of a warm-up as we have in previous games. I've already been getting a little... Um, been, I've already done a couple uh, a couple games before starting the stream, and the reason for that is um, I believe that the well, first off, I wanna I wanna make an uh, an apology here, which is not something that I, I normally do for anybody, but I want to apologize for the last two streams that we had, where I said we would be doing a world record, um, things didn't quite pan out, and I, I uh, stopped for achieving that. Um, and that, it wasn't right of me to open the video, create those kinds of expectations, and then not fulfill them. You, you know, you see, you see world record, you hear world record, you expect to see something amazing happen. And we definitely saw some amazing stuff on those streams, but not what was um, advertised, for lack of a better word. So I'm sorry for that, and I want to go ahead and get it out there that, yes, this stream, we are, I'm, I'm going for it, and I'm going to achieve it. We're, we're not stopping the stream until we until we get the world record. Now, um, that's that's my guarantee to you. So, uh, in, in light of that, the reason I've already gone through most of my warm-up is that I believe that um, what I've come to the conclusion is that, uh, as I mentioned in the previous streams about warming up with the viewers, allowing them to kind of get into the zone with you, um, yes, it does that, and it's, it's valuable for, for that purpose, but... What it's also doing is it's allowing the stream snipers to also get in their groove and to get acclimated to my patterns and um, and pacing and all that kind of stuff. And it's making it easier for them to interfere with the stream and cause problems for us. So for that reason, we're going to jump into it a lot faster here than we have before. Um, we're going to you know try and catch these stream snipers by surprise, not let them get caught up with what's going on here and um and in in that way that will give us a easier time not that i couldn't you know just power through it beat them anyway um you know that that wouldn't be uh, outside of my capabilities but just to make things easier to uh to make things go smoothly for all of you and provide the best viewing experience. Uh, that that's what we're doing. We're going to just you know eliminate some of those extra little variables, and have a uh, we'll try to have a you know a good smooth run as we begin to uh, as we as we set some records. So anyway let's finish this uh this quick little warm-up game here oh a seven you do not see that very often once in about every um let's see a seven once every probably probably every 10 to 15 games it's rarer than that for most people um because i play the uh i play the hardest version of expert on minesweeper um, and this is also something that a lot of people don't know. There's there are some some hidden settings, uh, some hidden difficulty settings. Uh, again, this is something that as as somebody who has met the uh, developers, it was kind of taken under their wing. Um, a lot of the the secrets of Minesweeper that were that were shared with me. Um, that's one of them. There are, there are some hidden difficulty settings. Not really going to get into how you access those or um, how they work or anything like that and it's not um, it's not a massive difference but it is it is significant in terms of um, you know for instance we're going to see uh, sevens you know even eights more often than you would on the uh, conventional 
expert difficulty level. Now that's not necessarily in this uh, in this MindsweeperOnline.com version. Um, that's just you know some some extra commentary on you know just, just some some fun uh, Minecraft trip Minesweeper trivia there to uh, just to wet your palates you know um, get you uh, get you excited for for what's going on here. And, and yes, for the record, all the other times that I have beat the world record, um, I have done so in the uh, the higher difficulty version of Minesweeper Expert. Again, not doing it for this stream, just because when you start to unpack that kind of um, you know that kind of deep esoteric Minesweeper lore, a lot of people are going to have doubts about the legitimacy of what you're saying. So, just to avoid all that drama, again not into drama, not into trying to correct arrogant people. Um, just to avoid getting into all that, we're just playing regular old Minesweeper like like regular old people know it. That gum phone call. Don't know who that is. Anyway. Um, man, my headset's going off the hook. Like I got just, man, just people all over. Just everybody wants to, everybody wants to talk. So again, let's finish up this game here. Taking it nice and easy. That's the other thing too. If we if we take it easy in the beginning, then we also have a chance that we will uh, straight up fake out the stream snipers. Not counting on it because there is a lot of money in this for them. They are, as, as I said, I have my, um, some of my contacts um, in, the, uh, um, in the feds, you look into it a little bit, we definitely have stream snipers being hired by other supposed world record holders to stop this from, uh, from being successful, but we are gonna get it done. All right. Let's get into it here. All right. Pick up the speed just a little bit. Let's go. Oh, this this is a bad board. I remember this board. I've played this one before. Oh, not a fan of this one, but that's all right. That's a good um it's a good jumping off point for for what we're trying to do here. This is a good demonstration of what it's like for people who don't um, don't have a, a deep understanding of the game to to play this. Like if, if somebody else were to, if somebody who has never played this game before were to just jump in and be like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, how hard can it be? You just, you know, mash all these buttons. Uh, this is about what it would look like for for them to be trying to do this. See, and they would make stupid mistakes like that, like like clicking on a mine that is out there instead of knowing when um, instead of memorizing the boards like you're supposed to. Again, haters will say, "Oh, you can't memorize all the boards. There's, there's just too many of them. You'll never, um, you'll never play the same board twice. It's a, it's a number that um, is just so astronomically high." Well, I mean, put, you know, put two million hours into the game and then come back and talk to me. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, you know, these ignorant people. They, they assume that everybody is, uh, just is, is skillless and pathetic. As they are, and oh, I mean, uh, I can't stand it, and that, that, that's why I, I have to do this. That's why I have to to come out of um, pre-tirement. So, somebody uh, DM'd me and said um, in the super chats that uh, when I was talking about how I'm I'm not retired because I never even really opened my career to the public. Um, so I'm, it's not like coming out of retirement, and I was trying to come up with a way to uh, to say that succinctly, 
and he said that pre-tirement would be the word that I'm looking for. And I'm like, yes, that is that is exactly it. I'm coming out of pre-tirement to get out here and show people how this game is played. All right, so we are picking up the pace now. And you'll notice that one thing I do is I flag. Um, I do a lot more flagging than most supposed world record holders do. And what the purpose of that is is not so much to um, to help keep track of things myself, um, because if you're if you're doing this competitively, honestly, flagging like as much as I'm flagging right now is really kind of a waste of time. Um, you want to just go for the you because the objective of the game is not to flag every mine is to clear every mine. You can you could not flag a single mine, and if you clear everything, then you're good to go. You win. Um, the purpose of flagging is to let you guys see more of my thought process. And so yes, I do lose a little bit of time to doing that but it's it's not something that we won't be able to uh to make up for as we get deeper into the stream here we're gonna we're, we're still gonna be just fine beating these records so yeah we've got a um got a 139 there obviously that's nowhere close to to what we're looking at but or as, as far as records go you know alleged world record right now is in the 20s i believe We'll be going for um, by the end of the stream. We'll be we'll be getting into the teens easily. But um, yeah, I want I want to, you guys to see a little bit of my thought process as this stuff gets cleared, so that you can so so you can understand what's going on. Minesweeper it looks to a lot of people. And I recognize we'll probably have a few people watching the stream who are not um, who are not really into Minesweeper, and so for their sake, I want to uh, kind of paint a picture for them of what's going on here. Because some people like might not even know um, how to play; they may have uh, grown up with a um, a uh, Mac Macintosh computer in their family. Um, and in that case, they, they wouldn't have played any games, um, much less Minesweeper. So just for the likes of these kinds of people, it's good to, um, it's good to, uh, let people get an idea of what's going on like this. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, helping people out whenever you can, especially when it comes to gaming. Very, uh, a very heavy heart for the gaming community and its gamers. So, any time that I can, you know, help people along uh, when it comes to gaming and understanding the games and feeling the games in in their soul, that's always that's always worth the effort to me. Now, we do have to balance this, however, like I said earlier, we've got stream snipers out there in the chat, and when that begins to be a problem, then like once, once they come out, then we're just going to let it loose, and they're going to be surprised, they're not going to expect the kind of firepower that I'm bringing to the table here, the intellectual, mental psychological, um, epistemological firepower that's going to be happening in this stream. It's it compl it completely will blow them away. Uh, and their performance, poor performance, exactly. Their poor performance will be poorer as they try to stream snipe me than it would have been if they had just come in with no expectations whatsoever. So by playing, um, you know, by playing mediocre games like this, I'm lowering their expectations. 
And because stream snipers don't have any original thoughts or um, or really any redeeming qualities or human characteristics whatsoever, uh, because they lack those things, they're not able to set a bar of performance for themselves. They kind of just watch and then they try to emulate and copy, which is why they're stream snipers. And so in order to um, in order to really fake them out and get the best of them, I have to get the worst out of them by playing poorly, giving them the wrong kind of thing to uh, try to try to emulate and and uh, to try to emulate and adjust to. And when they are adjusted to the wrong thing, then I will destroy them with my real power. And that's just what you have to do with these kinds of kinds of so-called people. That's just um, that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, you're dealing with you know the absolute dregs of humanity who have no talent or skill, and that makes them, ironically, into uh, into effective shapeshifters. And so you have to get them to shapeshift into the wrong thing. And that's what we're doing right here. So for, you know, for a lot of people, this may, this may seem like um, a pretty decent skill level. It might seem like I'm trying. I am not. I am not trying right now. The only thing that I am trying to do is your mom. No, the only thing that I'm trying to do is get these uh, stream snipers on the wrong scent. They're dogs. They're actual dogs, and um, and you have to throw you have to throw off the scent to get them to um, to get them to chase their own tail, which is how you defeat any any dog really. And that's another another life thing, because we like to talk about uh, life advice and stuff too on this stream sometimes. Um, not a lot. Because again, mostly dealing with gamers, and when it comes to gamers, you know, gamers life kind of got to pick one. But in life, when you have to fight a dog, um, the the main thing you want to focus on is uh, getting it to chase its tail. And if you can get the dog to chase its tail, I mean, you've you've got him right where you want him. Like there's nothing. Like once he's chasing that tail, there's nothing that he can do to stop you. So, um, you know, people who, who deal with, uh, you know, uh, guard dogs and, and things like that, um, have run-ins with, uh, different types of dogs. Remember the, the key is the tail. Like, um, just like, uh, oh, what was his name? Man, it's a legendary, um. Uh, this legend, this hero from from some legend. Uh, who was it? Delta. Delta said memory is the key, and that's how you remember this. When you think, when you try to think, um, how do I defeat a dog? Then you remember, memory is the key. And then you'll remember, what was I supposed to remember? Right, the tail was the thing I'm supposed to remember. Because the tail is the key. So when you think memory is the key from from Delta, the Delta AI in um, the Reds versus Blues, then you'll, when you think memory is the key, then you'll remember that the tail is the key because the tail is what you were supposed to remember. So memory is the key. Tail is the key because tail is what you're supposed to remember. So when you get the dog to chase its tail, that's it. Like it, it's done. It's it's dying of something, you know. So remember that next time you have a encounter with a dog. I've um, I've probably defeated at least uh, uh, 
certainly over 300 dogs in combat at this point. I do, um, in, in real life that is, uh, if we're talking about uh, gaming, about uh, defeating dogs. Uh, well then we're probably looking at, probably looking at Minesweeper, I mean Minecraft, and let's see. I don't know if they, I think they have some, like there's stats in Minecraft, but I don't know if there are stats about how many dogs you kill. I'll have to look into that and see if I can find out, because already uh, the, the chat is blowing up. People are asking, how many dogs did you kill in Minecraft? How many dogs did you kill in Minecraft? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I have to look it up and see. Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. I need to answer it. I, it's not good for me to go ahead and get this... Uh, to start <laughs> to start on this uh, line of reasoning without having a answer for you. Uh, so again, I apologize. Lots of apologies today. Um, really have uh, I've set I've created a lot of expectations that I haven't um, I haven't followed through with, and that is um, that is one of my few character flaws that I have. And it's because um, it's, it's not really my fault. It comes down to the fact that I, I am introverted, and so um, I'm an introverted and a INTJ. So uh, generally, I just have better things to do than worry about um, anything that has to do with other people, and that leads to to situations like this, where um, due to other people's lack of uh, importance. I don't always follow through with some of the um, some of the things that I lead them to mistakenly believe are going to take place. So again, apologies. Um, it's not your fault, not my fault either. But that is uh, it is something that I do feel bad for um, the people that it affects um, in in some way. So, um, right on that note. So the um, the what we were originally talking about, um, killing dogs in Minecraft. It's it it comes there. There's a there. There's kind of a. Meta metaphysical question in there too, uh, due to the nature of the game Minecraft, is what does it mean? There's two metaph metaphysical questions really. Is what does it mean to kill a dog? And then also the second question, what does it mean to be a dog? So if I, I think so, just to take the opposite extreme. If we were to go into like peaceful creative mode, whatever, and uh, you know where you have unlimited blocks and weapons, you have spawn eggs, all that kind of stuff. You can, um, you know, you could just, you know, you've got unlimited TNT, all all this kind of stuff. Obviously, this would make it really easy uh, to just kind of inflate your numbers by building giant statues of dogs and then blowing them up with TNT. Uh, but that's not going to be, obviously, the same as going into survival mode, the normal uh, gamer mode, and finding the dogs out in the woods in the tundra and killing them uh, with your hands. And so th this is an obvious example. Um, for one thing, the question, what does it mean to kill? Well, if you're blowing up a statue with free TNT, is it really fair to say that you're killing anything? Not really. What does it mean to be a dog? If the dog is, um, if the dog is a statue of a dog, then, I mean, it's probably not really a dog. And you can't say that anything that is done to the statue of the dog has anything to do with the dog of which it is the um, symbol. Now, if you're 
Roman Catholic. You may disagree with some of the implications of that, but um, when it comes to Minecraft, that's that's you know that's the way it is. Um, so for um, as as most things, the the correct answer is somewhere in the middle. You know, not at either extreme. Not at the end of, um, you know, okay, so the only dogs that count are the ones that you find out in survival mode and uh, killing them with your bare hands. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to say, oh, every statue of a dog that you build and then blow up with unlimited TNT, that also counts as a dog kill. You know, we want... Um, we want a balanced view of life and uh, and these kinds of deep questions. And so I think the answer to that is, if somebody were to ask me how many dogs that I've killed in Minecraft, then what I would probably do is I would open up a game um, in creative mode and spawn a bunch of actual dogs and start killing them with a sword enchanted with sharpness eight which is something you probably haven't um probably haven't played with because this might be um i'm probably not really supposed to say anything about this but there are additional uh enchantment levels beyond those which are available to most people in the base game and again this is kind of uh it was, you know maybe a little bit confidential but um if it if it comes down to it i will just um if if they sue me for like breaking the nda or whatever i will just buy off their lawyer and have them throw the case but the uh there are, um, just like there are secrets in Minesweeper, there, there's some esoteric uh, deep lore knowledge that is available to uh, me, but not necessarily everybody else. Same thing goes for Minecraft. There is a lot of deep esoteric um, uh A lot, a lot of deep esoteric sub lore that most people are not aware of and a lot of techniques and um, you know really alchemy in the game that is not available to normal people and not going to um, tell you guys like how all that stuff works because that's information that was sort of entrusted to me by the uh, by the founder of um, Microsoft when he built uh, Minecraft and so yeah not really uh, not really gonna just totally spill the beans and everything because he, he entrusted that information to me um, there may come a time, just like when it, ca it came time to, uh, when it comes time to expose the uh, the true nature of Minesweeper, as as we're doing, um, you know, there's a time to expose all that. But the time to to show all the secrets of mine, uh, um, mine, Minecraft is not yet here, and it will come someday. That time will arrive. And the trumpet will sound, and I will. Um, I'll start streaming some Minecraft and show the world uh, what it really means to craft mines. But that day is not today, sadly, for you. But it will come. Hopefully, you'll still be alive to see it. Uh, with the way you know, I don't know the way the world is going right now, who knows? You might get hit by a chemical train and die before you have the opportunity to see all the secrets of Minesweeper, and then you will be um, you'll be dead. And I don't really like streaming for dead p 
people in general, so I probably won't let you watch it if you're dead. So try to stay alive until I can start the um, until I can start the streams about revealing all of these secrets of mine, mine, um, Minecraft. And then after that, then you can um, then you can die whenever you uh, whenever you feel like it. Um, so let's see. We are um, we're finishing up our little um, the story time that we had there. Um, riveting stuff, and again. Being a introvert, storytelling does take up a uh, substantial amount of my mental power, um, in in the sense that my mental power is is limited anyway. Um, so not not strictly like in in a sense that uh, I can't play Minesweeper at full capacity without. Uh, without stopping story time but the fact is um you know i'm going to i'm going to do story time in the streams because you have to have story time in the streams for one thing that's one of the keys to success in uh in streaming um the video games you've got to you've got to tell stories while you stream so we're going to do that um but the reason that we haven't uh you know, gone to uh, maximum performance overdrive at this point in the stream while doing the story time is because that can be really uh, disconcerting and discouraging to people who do have more limited mental resources. Um, they can they can feel uh, they can feel like they can't relate to me if um if i'm just like going a thousand miles per hour in the game and at the same time i'm telling all these great stories so the um in order to not uh not alienate these people i do slow down the pace of the gaming just you know just a little bit so that people can um just so that people don't get overwhelmed and uh anxious and start having depression um due to their lack of skill because that's that's one thing as i've said before very passionate about uh making sure that the gamers aren't too depressed i hate it when i hear about gamers who are depressed because um, you know, in a way, in some sense of the word, we are all gamers. And when one gamer is depressed, we're all depressed in, in some way. I don't really get depressed, but um, to the extent that, you know, you could say that, um, that I... Uh, To the extent that I experience uh, psychological states that are, you know, loosely analogous to depression, um, you know, there there is, you know, that that kind of um, analogy there, and so I have a deep, deep, really, 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 really deep empathy for gamers who are depressed, because I think, wow. Like, you know, I don't ever feel that way, but I'm so happy that I don't ever feel that way. And that happiness that I have is, um, the happiness that I have that I don't feel that way gives me room to feel sad for you that that you are um that you are weak enough to feel that way because of the games um or that you're weak enough to feel feel that way in spite of 
the games. And I, I know that um, I know that a lot of people, uh, a lot of gamers, they use the games as a means to help them cope with their depressions. And I don't, I don't want to take that away from them. I don't want to turn the game that was supposed to help them with the depressions as a means to make them feel like even worse and push them deeper into the depressions. Like, you know, the gaming should be for the good of the depressed gamers and not for the bad of the depressed gamers. And look, look, look at that seven. Look at us today. We've got just sevens all over the place. Now, um, yeah, so the, uh, Again, so that is why, that's another reason that I will sometimes um, kind of throttle down my, my skill level a little bit to make the, um, to make the depressed gamers feel a little, little less depressed. Because if they see me playing in, uh, at a skill level that's like achievable for them, then, then they might think, hey, look at him, he's the he's the best minesweeper player in the world and look he's you know i mean i could kind of imagine myself playing like that someday if i practice really hard like he's you know that's not unattainable what he's doing right now i could probably do that someday and so um me playing me playing really poorly like this uh you know it, it has a measurable positive impact on the on the mental health of the gamers who are watching because they think, wow, huh, I can, you know, I can achieve something worthwhile in the gaming community if I, if I put my mind to it, I put my grind to it, I do, I, you know, I put some hard work into it, you know, maybe I can, um, maybe I can put out sub 150s. And, you know, I saw, I saw the best Minesweeper player in the world putting out sub 150s on Expert. And I think if I can do that too, then in a way it's like I'm standing beside him putting in sub 150s and it's, um, and it's, you know, and there's like this, uh, you know, it feels like I, I have, um, like I have a brother and he didn't die in, um, in a car crash with my entire family 17 years ago. And that's the experience that I want to give to gamers. I want I want them to have that kind of experience in their mind because that makes you happy. That makes you feel like the little smiley face right there. And you know, if if there's one thing that Minesweeper is all about, it's about this guy. Look at him. He represents you. He represents all of us. And when you win, it's cool. Things are great. He's happy, he's got sunglasses. He's, he's just a cool guy and he's happy. When you lose, look, he's dead. And that's how it is with gaming. You die when you lose. Your character dies, you die a little on the inside. You get depressed, which can lead to dying. Like, that's what happened to him right here. He didn't die from the mine. The mine didn't explode. Look, it's still there. The mine is still intact. It didn't blow up. But he knew he failed, and he got depressed and he died. That's the story of Minesweeper. Okay? And that's why I do it. That's why I do what I do. It's for the gamers. So, um, yeah, we're going to put in a, a few more, uh, put in a few more rounds here. We're getting a little, um, we're getting a little up there in time. Now, I know I said, I guaranteed you actually that the, um, that the stream would not conclude until the, uh, until the world record was achieved. And I'm thinking that um, um, 
Yeah, I might. Uh, maybe I won't do that. Um, because you know, get, getting you know, thinking about the depressed gamers, it just makes me. Um, it makes me mad at depression, and sometimes when I get mad at depression, I have to go hit the um, hit the um, the I have to go you know punch the jujitsu bag for a little while because I I do box jujitsu. Um, that's another one of the things that I do, um, the skills that I have, and um, so yeah, I'm probably going to have to go do some of that. Uh, for a little while. We'll play a couple more games here. Um, maybe we'll get a world record, maybe we won't. But, um, yeah, that's the way we're, um, we're going to be rolling today. Now, um, it was, there's people chatting, probably. And I know there's, yeah, there's, so there's going to be complaints about, hey, you guaranteed us that, um, that this stream would not end until the, uh, until we had a world record on our hands here. Um, I did guarantee that. That's true. And, um, again, this goes back to the fact that I am, um, I'm an introverted INTJ. Um, so the thing about the thing about making guarantees like that is that um, because of my personality type, like I recognize that that's disappointing to you, but I also kind of see how it's. It's not like it's not my fault for telling you the wrong thing. It's more like it's your fault for believing it, um, and not like you shouldn't believe me when I tell you things. It's like not like that at all. It's more so that, um, in the sense of like I, I. I'm comfortable in my own skin and like it's not important to me what other people think that much so it's you know the okay the thing about a promise is you make a promise when you want somebody to think that you're going to do something or that something will or won't happen and for me um what people think isn't important so the whole point of a promise is like just kind of moot in the first place um and really like anybody who knows anything about uh about uh promises and stuff would know that like this is like uh it's like not not an issue at all but um the other thing is we have to get back into the metaphysics of the issue um and you know this is kind of some big brain stuff but uh one of my favorite metaphysical quotes from um from uh the platonic aristotelian school of metaphysicality um which I've, I've studied extensively in so like i know a lot about this uh, about this kind of stuff but there's um there's a there's a notion that you say what you mean and you mean what you say okay and when i made that promise i didn't mean it so if you say what you mean and you mean what you say if I didn't mean it, then it's like I didn't actually say it. So really, it's I didn't actually make a promise at all because I didn't mean it. And if you interpreted it that way, then that's kind of your own fault. Um, like, you know, it's not like I misled you. It's just that you like interpreted things in a way that uh, that you shouldn't have. Um, so, you know, 
again like i like i feel bad for you that you made that mistake but like i can't just like hold your hand and um and you know do all your thinking for you like you have to um it's up to you to to know like when somebody like what somebody means when it appears that they're saying something um because they might not be they might not be saying anything i didn't i didn't say anything because i didn't mean it philosophically you know from that principle that you say what you mean you mean what you say i didn't i didn't say anything like i i <laughs> literally don't know what you're talking about so um but yeah that's um let's see we will um i've still got just like a little bit of, a bit of like a minesweeper itch we're gonna keep going until um, until that itch stops, which probably won't be too much longer here. I'm getting uh, we're yeah we're at you know we're at about 45 minutes. That's uh that's about how long we usually like to go. Um, that's another thing about um, about streaming being an you know a successful online personality like I am. Uh, consistency, you know, you want to maintain consistency. Um, with your viewers, they you you should make sure that they know what to expect. Um, so shooting for like similar time frames in your videos, um, like 45, you know, like we go between 45 and 50 minutes. Um, that kind of consistency is really important. It goes a long way. It goes a long way towards um, giving people the uh, towards helping their expectations be accurate. And so, yeah, that's, um, we'll go through oh, maybe one more quick game right here, but yeah, consistency in terms of, um, in terms of video length, that's a, a big plus when it comes to, uh, building, building your online, uh, gaming streaming brand. Um, and it. It's, um, how would I put this? It's almost like a, a form of, of honesty, which is, which is really important in, um, in any kind of, uh, you know, relational kind of transaction, which is what streaming is. You know, it's, it's, you know, we're relating to each other in a way like I'm performing for you. You are watching me. Um, it's a it's a relationship and there has to be honesty in that and so the uh, consistent consistent video length is a form of that honesty like if you're in a relationship and then uh, you know the other person says um, I love you you know you don't want to wake up tomorrow and then Oh, they think something else and in the same way you know if you're building a uh, streamer viewer relationship and one day you say the video is between 45 and 50 minutes and then the next day you know is something totally nobody wants to wake up and it's like something totally different the next day you know people need consistency so that's um that, that's one reason to do this so let's see um yeah that'll be about it for today um Again, world record. Uh, we'll come back to it later. Could have had it today easily, but um, you know we got on to, to other stuff, and it's, it was important to um, to do that. So, anyway, you all have a good one. Stay smiling like the Minesweeper guy, and I'll see you next time.